Having a bias in IMU data is a serious issue. It will lead to drifts and incorrect estimation. You have to remove the bias in from IMU data, otherwise your sensor readings will be useless. Hi, it is me Yerke, a founder of Step School, and today I will show how to remove a gyroscope and a compass bias from ICM 2094H sensor. Also, I will show a very important feature of the sensor. And I believe that um, the insights I'm going to share in this video can be easily used in for other uh, IMU uh, sensors. So let's start uh, from a gyroscope. So what is a gyroscope? Gyroscope measures angular velocity. So in ideal scenario, when the sensor is in static position, it should return zero. But since we have some bias, when um, the IMU sensor is motionless, it will return the bias in um, static position. So what we can do, we can uh, keep the sensor at rest and we can take many measurements, let's say hundreds of um, gyroscope data, then we can take the average. So the average will be equal to the bias. So let me show how I did it inside of my code. So inside of the initialization function, uh, before configuring the gyroscope, I call this remove uh, zero bias function. So let's open this function. So what I do in this, um, uh, inside of this function, I uh, take 100 gyroscope measurements and I take the sum. And then I can compute the average and this average will be equal to the bias. In addition, at this point, I want to show a very important feature of this sensor. So if we open the data sheet of this sensor, we can find the following um, registers. And these registers are designed to uh, remove the bias inside of the chip. So once we compute the uh, bias, we don't need to subtract it inside of our code. Inside, instead, we can define the bias using these registers. And when the IMU sensor provides gyroscope data, this bias will be automatically subtracted uh, from, from, the, from the gyroscope data. So let's open them. So here we have um, X uh, gyroscope offset cancellation, so upper right then we have lower right and it's same for other axis. So after I computed um, the sum, I take the average, so I divide by 100, by all, but also I have to divide by four. I mean, I don't know exactly why it is so, but this is how the sensor was designed. So if we take a thousand uh, measurements, send thousand samples, we have to divide by 4,000. Then what I do, I just write these values to the corresponding registers. So we have this upper byte and lower byte for x-axis offset, x-axis bias. So here I'm extracting the upper byte and we have lower byte and it's the same for other axis. And that's it. We don't need to do any modification of our code. Once we use these registers, the, the offset, the bias will be removed automatically. Next, let's talk about an offset a bias in, in mag magnetometer data. And for magnetometer, we cannot use the same approach. Instead, we use a different scheme, which is plotting um, magnetometer measurements in real time. Uh, for that purpose, I created uh, three um, 
dumb global variables. Then what I do, I assign uh, my, my, my need to meter measurements to these variables. Then let's debug the code. Um, then uh, I'm going to use a serial wire viewer to plot uh, these variables. Uh, if you're not aware or if you missed uh, that, I have a separate video where I explain how to use serial wire viewer to plot the global variables. You can find it uh, just over here. So here I have this tool icon and here I define the name of the variables that I want to plot, which is the dumb variables that I created. Then let's run the code. And here we have X, Y axis and the Z axis um, magnetometer data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate along Z axis, uh, the, the sensor, but I have to keep that axis horizontal. So then let me pause it. Um, in, a, in a perfect scenario, when I rotate, the, the absolute value of the maximum value and minimum value has to be equal. So if the absolute value of the maximum value is 200, for example, the minimum value has to be minus 200. But since we have this offset, this bias, we have some shift upward or downward. So we have to identify them. To do that, we check just values. So x-axis is this um, yellow line. So for x-axis, the maximum value is around 160. Then I have minimum value, which is um, minus 413. So to compute, uh, to compute uh, x-axis of, uh, offset, uh, we take the maximum, which is around 173. Then we have minimum, which is uh, minus uh, 426, minus 20, 246. So we add these values and we divide by two. So in that case, I guess we get um, how much? Mm, 130, I think. This would be the bias. And we do the same for y-axis. So here y-axis maximum value is uh, 180. So it will be 180, around 180. Then we have a minimum a minus 423 and we divide by 2. And this would be again around minus 130, I guess. So it will be around 120, 130 minus. So what I do inside of my code, I have three macros. So here I have, let's say minus 130, here my, my minus 130, let's say. Then when I, when I read, magnetometer data, I just subtract uh, these biases from the magnetometer measurements. This is what I do. And you might ask how we can compute z-axis bias. We use exactly the same approach, but instead of a z-axis, let's say we do x-axis rotation, keeping it horizontal, then we do rotation. Then we stop, when we, we pause the code. So here we have uh, Z axis, which is uh, 200. Here we have um, 
800 so um, the bias will be around 300 because 800 minus 200 so it, it's better I think to write it Two hundred divided by two, which is around three hundred. So for z axis, it will be around three hundred. Once you define these these offsets, you can run the code again. You can check. You can verify that the, the absolute value of maximum and minimum is equal. Once you achieve that, it means that you removed uh, offset in magnetometer data. And the final thing is uh, offset in accelerometer data. Accelerometer also have has some offset, but uh, having offset in accelerometer is not so critical as having bias as having offset in gyroscope and in magnetometer so uh, I'm, I'm not doing any modification to the accelerometer data so that's it for today the final note is that you can find this uh, source code i'm using in a step school organization on on github so this step school organization has uh, many repositories that hold the source code the materials of all projects that I've worked so far and how can you access to these repositories you can join to uh, join my community on on patreon page and on my website once you become um, the community mentor you will get access to all these repositories and the final thing please uh, don't forget to press the like button. It will take two seconds of your time, but it would help me a lot to reach new audience. And eventually it will help to provide you with more interesting, more insightful content. Thanks a lot. See you soon.